Again, thank you for everything. Muchas gracias. Uh, um, anyway, um, what I wanted to share with you today, I'll tell you my impressions of, of today's meeting, uh, which are extraordinary. But um, I thought I would begin today by telling you why it was that I became involved in the kind of research that I did. And from a very, very early age as a child, I was fascinated by the fact that people spoke other languages. And I was most fascinated by the fact that people spoke, could speak more than one language. And I grew up in a family which was essentially monolingual English, but had grandparents that spoke other languages. Um, but we were not allowed to speak because the, everybody wanted to assimilate and wanted to become very American, and being very American meant that you spoke only English. And I always thought that that was a tremendous, tremendous loss, and I always was disappointed in the monolingualism um, in the US. So I made it a lifetime career and um, did my research and continue to do research to understand is it impossible to learn a new language um, throughout one's lifetime? Is it possible to learn a language after age 10, for example? So I set about trying to research that. And I wanted to tell you six basic things that I learned and then I want to share with you, or you'll probably understand or identify or um, already know what I'm going to tell you. First thing is, is that we know that human language is a unique human ability. Uh, it's truly, truly unique. Um, and it separates us from all of the other species in this world. Um, the second thing is that multilingualism, um, as somebody said earlier, is the natural state. That the human capacity for language is infinite. Right? There's no upper limit in terms of, oh, I can only learn three languages. Or I can't learn more than two because it means I won't speak anyone very well. It's not the case, right? It's your capacity is it. You can learn a million languages, although there are not a million languages to learn. Uh, the other thing is, number three, is that everyone can learn a new language. If you learned your first language, then you have the ability to learn many other subsequent languages, all right? There's no such thing as a critical period where after some age, I can't learn a new language. But you all know this already, right? The easiest and the best way to learn a new language is in a naturalistic setting. And settings that simulate or can get as close as possible to the conditions that a young child learns a first language are the best ways to learn a new language. All right? You get encouragement. You hear lots of natural speech. It's not pressured. Nobody is giving you a grade. And those are the best ways. Um, the other thing that we've learned um, is that the more languages you know, the easier it gets. Right? Because you can build. Languages differ in only a finite number of ways, in a very limited number of ways. And once you have learned a certain range of languages, every other language is just sort of some sort of of clone or sort of a, you know, a variation on a language that you already know. And we know really that there's only one human language, right? Um, and the other piece of this, which is not directly from our research, but is that the more languages you learn, the smaller the world gets, right? Um, and the greater your understanding then of the world and its people. Okay, so these are the things I've learned from my over 30 years of research in the area. And I was very surprised to learn um, two years ago when Elizabeth first contacted me that these are the same tenets that underlie the HIPPO program, right? And I had no idea. So the HIPPO program, um, Dr. Uh, Mr. Dr. Gil, I'll call him, uh, it already had the insight and the brilliance to understand this. Um, and now we have the research that supports, the empirical research that supports exactly what it is that he's trying to do. And you are all a testimony to that fact, right? 
right? So let me just tell you a few other things that you may or may not know. Some of the other wonderful consequences that follow from being a multilingual is that it increases your intelligence. All right, we know that. That people who are multilingual on the whole are better at abstract thinking. They do better in math. They can deal with figurative languages a lot better. And that's something that also holds even when you start to learn a new language at age 90. Um, your attention, your ability to focus, your ability to stay on target is much better when you're a multilingual. You're not like this. It's like you can hear somebody. You know how to sort of gate out other noise. Um, also, we know um, that it helps you age. All right? You're less inclined to get dementia. For some reason, we don't know why that is the case, but that continued practice with multi with multi languages is a very, very good antidote to aging in terms of your cognition. Okay? Um, but what I do want to then share, so those are the things I've learned that I think that HIPPO incorporates. So what you have in HIPPO is the best, the perfect example of what it is that if I had to put together a program, this is the kind of program that I would put together. It's just extraordinary. And what I'm most impressed about from all my meetings is the community that you create um, with the learning of the new languages and how open and compassionate each of you are. It's, it's very, very impressive um, in how open you are. And I think that the openness of the community and your ability to accept each and every one of you also goes a long, long way then in terms of your tolerance um, for others who don't know a language as well, but also beyond that, right? And it also builds your confidence, um, not only with your ability to try new languages, but it builds your ability in all sorts of other areas as well. Your self-esteem is enhanced because you're a member of this group. So I want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to participate in these activities. And really what you have here is something, I keep saying extraordinary, but I don't know a better word. It really, really is extraordinary. And you are very, very, very special, special people for being a part of this program. So continue with that. Gracias. Shay Shay. Merci. And arigato, arigato, poesai.